What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 149.9 of the Games and Grass podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I am joined, and we'd all love to welcome back, Steve. What's happening, Steve? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good, man. Feeling real good. It's uh, This should be episode 150, but it's not. This is 149.9. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we wish our fallen comrade Finn Steele a speedy recovery. Mm-hmm. And episode one hundred and fifty will be next week for sure. It has to be surely because we're well, running out of numbers. <laughs> well, that, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I think it has to be because of that. Just simply because we're running out of numbers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it'd have to be like one hundred and forty-nine point nine nine. <laughs> well, it, it, probably probably nine one and then nine two nine three yeah we just have to the exhaust it until we get right to 150 mm-hmm. yeah yeah we'll be fine we'll, we'll be fine next we week won't need still. to do that finn will be back and it'll be all good all good all good uh, back, back to normal for me next week because uh well back to back to normal for me now really hence why i'm here but um hell yeah, yeah. i'll uh you know my my holiday is pretty all, all but over back to stupid work next week um and just generally feeling better um so yeah i'm looking forward to getting back into the into the swing of things and you look thanks. healthy oh thank you i'm i'm trying i've had a terrible two weeks in terms of food but i've been on holiday so yeah man you effort. look good you look healthy you look you're you, 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 you glowing uh yeah fresh faced and glowing could be sunburn you know <laughs> well, it could be sunburn we've had some <laughs> we've had some belting weather in this country yeah, we have. We have. Last week was um, last week was really interesting. Um, That's some shit weather as well. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday it absolutely hammered it down. That, that was fun. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, but I, I'm feeling good, and you know, I just want to say thanks to everyone that messaged me or you know left comments on my social media, which I haven't been back on yet. I, I quietly snuck onto Discord the other day. And had a quick look, and I saw a few messages on there from uh, from people. So thank you very much. But yeah, doing doing all right. Good. There you go, man. We're loved. You're loved. Thanks. Yeah, that's it. We, you know, we're now now that we've we've got this this you know platform, we're mm. we're, we're influencers. People care about us now. <laughs> we are influencers. Yeah, and we, we influenced Squinny to go and buy an Xbox Series S. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's months of seeing Sea of Thieves screenshots and a couple of days worth of seeing flight simulator screenshots. You know, couple that with how awesome Game Pass is, and he caved. I I can't blame him, to be honest. No. It's awesome. I absolutely love my Series S. It's excellent. Yeah, man. Squid is gonna have a great time with it. But you know, we do need to extend an apology uh to Mrs. Squinny. Um, mm, for this, sorry. she did actually pin the blame on us. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, she, she can join the club of, um, you know, mm. Xbox widows, basically. Um, yeah. you know, Claire, Claire lost out last night to the Xbox because yeah. of flight simulator for a good five hours yesterday. Nice. Um, and an hour this morning before going out. So, uh, <laughs> I was like, I can I can sneak an hour in, go yeah. and have a go and have a little flight around uh, Bora Bora or wherever it is, <laughs> French Polynesia, somewhere like that. <laughs> um, uh, so it's worth it's worth probably noting fresh off the bat here that we're going to free ball this podcast today because oh, yeah. we'd planned to do um, the live show today, and mm. you know up until sort of mid afternoon, yeah. and we were like, you know what, we should still put a podcast out this week. Um, so we're just free balling it. We were like, you know, this is going to be light and fluffy, light and fluffy. There you go. Yeah. There's the title. That's, of that's the title. Podcast. It, it writes itself. And fluffy. Words that have definitely been used to describe me before. Yeah. I mean, look at your beard. <laughs> the beard's a bit fluffy. I need to it's fluffy. Uh, need to give that a trim before I go back to work next week. Nah. <sighs> just grow that shit out. If I've got a job. Anyway, <laughs> um, big news from me today. I got a new job. Yes, yes. Congratulations, mate. I'm really pleased for you. And Finn isn't even here with the fucking soundboard for the round of applause. Let's do a round of applause. 
I don't know what that's going to sound like. But anyway. <laughs> I'm sure it'll through, sound wonderful. Through my £10 microphone, I'm sure it'll sound great. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you sound great, so I'm, I'm guessing the Thanks. clap sounded great as well. The clap never sounds great. That's a poor <laughs> choice of words. But don't worry yeah. about that. You've got VD. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love um, that Postman Pat. Is it Scouse Postman Pat? No, no, I just think it's um, it's like politically incorrect Postman Pat. I mean, that that is oh, old yeah. now. It's I really that, old now. I, I remember that going round when I first started at the company I work for now, and that was 17 and a half years ago. That's when phones were a pile of crap too. Like oh You could God, just about that. get some video on there. Yeah. And they're like, hey, look at this. I'll Bluetooth it, yeah. And then <laughs> so somebody... <laughs> Go on, yeah, go on, go on. So somebody Bluetooths you the the um, the non PC Postman Pat, and you're like, oh my god, this is the the most hilarious shit that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Do you remember? I was thinking about this the other day. Don't know why, but I was thinking about this the other day. Do you remember when, like, if you had, you used to get like, I guess it's an early form of gifts, maybe, um, like inappropriate stuff, uh, sure. obviously, uh, yeah. and you would send it using infrared. On your mobile. Ooh. Do you remember that? Infrared? I like, yeah. That was like a Nokia phone thing. Like, because. No, no, no. Because I, I didn't really have. I, I, the only Nokia phone I had was the N95, and I was doing it before that. N95? Is that the Matrix one or? No, the N95 was a, it was a slide. It was a slide up one. It was kind oh, of yeah. like the last. It was kind of like the last decent Nokia phone before the iPhone came out. It was, like right, 2000, okay. it was like 2007, 2006, 2007. Jeez. But yeah, infrared. No, I don't remember infrared, infrared, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then Bluetooth, but Bluetooth took over pretty quick. And yeah, you'd, you'd Bluetooth uh, videos to people. Postman yeah. Pat being one of them. Yep. Yeah, and um, Tractor Boy. Tractor Boy. Yeah. The original. The hey, original that started one. it all, man. That started, that started yeah, all the viral so. videos. Mm. Yeah, that was the original sort of yeah viral. You know that was that got huge. It was on Soccer AM when Soccer AM was really yeah. popular and yeah, when Soccer yeah. AM was good, like not now when it's like twenty minutes long or whatever it's like, it is yeah, now. 20, 20 minutes yeah. when they could when they could get away with stuff that you will <sighs> not get away with now. No, no Soccer AM. Yeah, man, Soccer, hey, you know what? Soccer AM was so good back in the day. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, ridiculously good. So funny, like you pretty much laugh all the way through because there was just so much funny stuff going on. It it got to a point where it was it was that popular that it was on for like five hours. Yeah, it was crazy. Like started to super start early. Seven. You saw at seven, finish at twelve. <laughs> Mad. And now was it an hour now? I think it's ninety minutes because game of football is ninety minutes. Sure, yeah. I think that's the that's the th that's the logic behind it. It's still it's still okay. You still get a few funny bits and pieces here and there, but it's not what it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I do, you know, I follow them on Instagram and I do enjoy the videos that they post, like when Jimmy Bullard's volleying balls in top bins. And, you know, I, I enjoy that yeah. stuff. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Fenners is all right. I've met Fenners. Nice, nice. bloke. Yeah. So. Fenners Tenners. Fenners Tenners, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, but right, go, yeah. going back to Tractor Boy, though, like, uh, it really was the original and it's still hilarious now. Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, it's that brilliant. guy had no idea what he was starting. No, no, not a clue. Not a clue. Like, could you imagine that now in like the world of TikTok and Instagram stories yeah. and all of that and Twitter? This is like pre, this is pre all of that. Pre this is pre Facebook. I think, I think it's pre MySpace. No, I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think it's, I think it's around the same time. You think? Yeah. It just yeah. feels like forever ago now. I mean, obviously, you oh, look yeah. at it, it's filmed on a potato. Oh, it looks like... <laughs> it looks terrible. He looks terrible. He's done what? him! He done him! Have he a go-go go cartoon. <laughs> he did not look happy. That's not that far from us, really, where that... Where no, that it was only down the road, wasn't it? Yeah, it's not that far from us. Uh, he's going to have my fucking pants down. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh... <laughs> Guys, if you don't know what we're talking about, firstly, you've been living under a rock for the last almost 20 years. Um, or you're under the age of 30. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe that, yeah. But even that, I think, you know, um, K knows like what it is. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But 
Um, if you don't know what it is, just Google Tractor Boy. It'll be the first thing that comes up. It's absolutely legendary. Yeah. The picture quality is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Don't um, expect like HD or, well, you know, yeah, don't, even or... don't, it's, it's, don't even expect. Don't even expect P. Yeah, no, P is for potato. There's no, yeah. <laughs> it's 1080 <laughs> potato is what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty poor. It's pretty yeah. poor. I think that's it's, being really generous as well. It's pre-HD. It's pre-HD, let alone ultra HD or 4K or any that nonsense. I wonder what he filmed it on. Do you reckon he like, filmed it on like a... I'm trying to think what phones had cameras that were, like, were capable of <laughs> shooting video because there weren't that Pro- many, probably. really. Uh, like a Sony Ericsson, perhaps? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Christ. Jesus. I had that Sony Ericsson where you slid the camera down at the back. It's like the camera yeah. was covered up, but then like you slid it down, it instantly opened the camera on your phone. It's pretty cool. I uh, Sony Walkman phone. I logged, yeah, I logged on to I logged onto Facebook last week because uh, it was my birthday, and I just thought I'd better go on and say thank you to people. Uh, many happy see... returns. What a weird phrase Thanks. that is. Yeah, many happy returns. Return... I don't even understand what, what it means. What am I returning? Yeah. Can I return? What, what the, returning years. Like, here you go. Have some more fucking years off me. I'm going to get it over. <laughs> um, and there was, a, there was some old pictures from a night out that we'd had, probably for my birthday. Uh, mm. And it was ones that you'd uploaded. And it said... Uh, um like uploaded via Sony Xperia photo album. Jesus. And that was that was you you'd uploaded them. When was that? <laughs> uh I want to say 2008, 2009. Bloody hell. We're so fucking old, man. We are really old. I mean we've we've gone through like the full generation of mobile phones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What was the first phone you had? I had um, an Alcatel something or other. <laughs> couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you exactly what it was, but yeah, I had a BT Cellnet phone. Well, do you know what? Yeah, I, I think I think it was it was an Alcatel, but it was on BT Cellnet. Yeah, mine was on one to one. Remember that <laughs> one to one? Yeah, they used to sponsor Everton, didn't they? Yeah, they did actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, it was so shit as well. Oh, you got a text well, come through. Orange were, you know, two for ones. Yeah. On Wednesday, Orange Wednesdays. It Orange Wednesdays. Hit. Yeah. God, man, we've been through. We've been through <laughs> some real shite <laughs> in terms of on, like. I was on Virgin Mobile for years. I was absolutely years. If I, I remember your phone. It was like a. It was silver, wasn't it? Yeah. I had a, yeah. Yeah. It was one of them. Yeah, because yours yeah. wasn't too different in shape to mine. No, because my BT cell, my yeah BT Cellnet phone it was it was black and like the screen was really small, and yours was mm. silver. I remember. Yeah, yeah, it was. A, mine was like one of the first color phones as well. Jesus, do you remember everything was just like green, wasn't it before that? Yeah, I mean this BT Cellnet phone that I had was like it was awful. You could barely like one line of text would come up on the screen. That's all you could fit on there. And you have to like scroll down and read rest. And it made no, like it just looked terrible. I think actually the first phone that I had, it was before that silver one that you're talking about. And actually you couldn't store any numbers on it. <laughs> and, or you could store probably five numbers. Right. Um, so I had, a, I had a case for it, you know, a proper one with a clip. A holster, you know. Nice. Um, you had a holster. <laughs> Excellent. I had a, holster. I had a holster. Never wore it. Was it like a belt obviously. clip? One like the you like? Yeah, it, it had a it, it had a belt clip, but, but I never wore it like that because uh, I'm not a virgin. Um, yep, fair enough. Well, you probably were um, then. No, I definitely wasn't. Um, oh, okay, good. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I probably was actually. Uh, anyway, uh, that's too much information. Um, mm. And and it was one of them proper. Yeah, it was the whole the whole phone has a case. It had the little, it had the plastic bit on the front and all of that. Mm. And uh, oh yeah, nice. You know what I mean? You know yeah, I then, know exactly what then, you mean. Yeah. And then in the in the back, I had a piece of folded up paper with different people's numbers because the phone could only store like five numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Unbelievable. Incredible, incredible. And then we, we were on about this the other week, weren't we? Where you'd uh, you'd text you text your mate. You go, uh, oh, what are you doing tonight? TB. Text back. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Ah, oh, yeah. TV just like like the, you could ask them a question. Like, but question mark is enough for somebody to reply when you really think about it. It but, really is, yeah. Yeah, uh, but then you put TB just in case. Just in case they didn't text. Oh, him. he's asked me a question, but he's not put text back, so obviously he doesn't want to know an answer. So <laughs> I'll just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you'd be like, uh, sorry, mate, this has got to be my last text. I'm down to 9p credit. <laughs> <laughs> And it was 10p to send a text. 10p for a text, yeah. (laughs) God damn it, man. Now you can record a podcast on your phone. (laughs) You can just do it. It's like that um, picture, isn't it? Where um, I think it's like an advert for like an electronic store. I don't know, something like Tandy's or something like that. Jesus. And it's got all of these things laid out on the floor. Mm. And every single one of those things in some way, shape, or form, is now on your phone. Calculator, video recorder, dictaphone, yeah. blah, 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 messaging, you know. Cause well, you can literally do anything on it. You can, yeah. Like teachers were it's like, hey, be good at maths because you're not going to be carrying a calculator around in your pocket all the time. Hey, yeah, dipshits, boom, joke's on now. you. Joke is on you. Yeah. Seriously, like, phones are just ridiculous now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the 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 like this iPhone that I'm using, or I guess most phones now, more powerful than the computer that uh, sent man to the moon, or didn't, if you listen to uh, that ginger idiot that we and we're mates with. Yeah, Captain Conspiracy, <laughs> he's there. He's there. No, didn't happen. Didn't send no man to the moon. <laughs> cool brick filmed it in studio. Yeah, it's all on TV set. Okay. <laughs> All right. Queen All killed right. Diana. Brilliant. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. Right. What, um, what's, the, what's the other one he said? I'm sorry. Before, oh, that's it. Madeline McCann will come back when she's 18. Oh, Fuck. I know. For Christ's Jesus sake. Christ. That's up, like, there with, it's up there with European time, that one. It is, yeah. I mean, guys, this is like this, obviously we're just like talking absolute crap at the minute. It might some of it might not mean anything to you, but this is the shit that we have to put up with in group <laughs> chat, right? <laughs> Everybody has group chat. Everybody's got a group chat with their closest mates. Uh, this is the bullshit that we have to put up with in ours. Unbelievable. Yeah, um, it's just absolute nonsense all the time. All the time. Yeah. Uh, I suppose we should probably like do some talking i mean look for the record we've got no gaming news this week we are totally <laughs> free balling we've watched some wrestling so we can talk about that just about just about watching but wrestling. this is a podcast aimed at the fans this is hey look if you listen to this we're podcast popping the boys isn't we popping the boys we're, hey, we're, pop- <laughs> we're, we're, we're popping the boys that's all we're doing and girls you know finn is usually here he's usually got a, a game heat prepared Mm. He's, you know, we, we, and we've he's got the gaming news up, and um, we've got all this stuff that we're going to talk about. But this isn't your regular schedule no. programming. This is the games and graps, light and fluffy free balling. Exactly. I listened to uh, last week's pod earlier, um, and um, quite quite relieved in a way that I wasn't involved because uh, most of those game characters on the game heap uh, I'd never heard of. So I'd have been made myself look like a right tip. Like I just have. I know oh. I've been all right with most, but um, some of them I'd have been like, I never played it. Uh, never played some of them it. were quite yeah. obscure, to be fair, though. Finn, like, yeah, it was good. A though. few out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah, we've I we've upped it. our game now that we're sort of learning how to use, um, mm. you know, the program that we 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 record this podcast on now. So, well, I say yeah. we, I mean Finn. Yeah, Finn. Like I can make stuff scrolling on the bottom of the screen, but that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just be happy if it doesn't crash on me. So, yeah. We'll I mean, see. you know, it's the risk you take. It's going to happen. I'm almost certain of it. Well, <laughs> if it happens, <laughs> I'll carry it until you come back. Yeah, it doesn't take me long to get back in. No, it'd be absolutely yeah. fine. No It'll dramas at all. It'll be fine. Right. Let's get down to brass tacks. Brass tacks. Let's go. Yeah, for brass it. tacks. What have you been playing this week? I'm not even going to, you know what? This week, I ain't even going to put the thing on the screen saying what we're playing. People can just guess at what we're talking about. Oh, I'm going to skip <laughs> to my favorite part. Not this week. You can guess. Can you timestamp your video? No. No. Um, not that I can't be asked with that, that stuff, that. by the way. No, no. If people, if people ever ask for it, um, the answer will still be no. Yeah. 
because we can't be asked. Um, no, that's, that's exactly why. Yeah, including you, Greg. Go away. Um, <laughs> so uh, I have um, gotten back into Animal Crossing. Uh, these Not last Greg few Steele, days. by the way. No, no, not Greg Steele. The great Greg Steele. Mm. My man. I saw him the other day. I had a chat with him when I dropped Finn's uh, mm. mug off his house. Yep. He asked yep. how you were. Oh, good. I forgot good. to pass on his regards, actually, when um, when I came to your house that same day. Cool. I'm good, Greg. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Much appreciated. You'll be happy with that, I think. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, so I've gotten back into uh, Animal Crossing. Uh, I haven't mm. been on it for absolutely ages or feels like ages. Um and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've been out and about various different places this week with, with the uh, with the family and stuff, and been getting a bit of a uh, bit of inspiration. So, you know, done some stuff with some of my open, empty spaces on my island, and uh, nice. yeah, it's, it's looking shit out again. So, um, how were your weeds? Did you have more weeds than Snoop Dogg? Um, no, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I, I had more than more than more than normal. Not as mm. many as Snoop Dogg, but. Um, mm. Yeah, there was there was quite a lot, but um, luckily Dakota had been playing. That's my daughter had been playing mm. on it, and um, you know, causing all sorts of mayhem, but also picking up weeds. So that was good. That's good. Um, and I have, as you can probably guess from from the start of the of the show, I've been playing uh, Flight Simulator on the Xbox. Talk, talk to me about it. What do you think to it? Um, I mean, I've downloaded it and I've been playing it myself. Uh, but I want to know what you think to it. I mean, it's it's a unique experience, I think. I think yeah, it's it's really unique, and and I think I was one of those that years ago when you know you'd see that Flight Simulator, it's a PC game. It's for the PC nerds, but yeah, for the nerds, yeah. And you'd be like, well, what's so good about this game where you just fly? What do you do? You sit there for seven hours while you're flying to New York, and then you land the plane. <laughs> oh, look, there's the Statue of Liberty. Wonderful. <laughs> it's, but I get it, and now get it, mm. and 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 I, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how close or how in depth the Xbox version is to the to the <clears throat> PC version, um, but it's a true true um, conversion as far as I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, you you can kind of tell as well because it's a, a little bit buggy at the minute. There's a few there's a few weird things that happen. I find, um, but that's to be expected. It's a massive game. Um, yeah. and, and there's just so much on it as well, but, uh, it's, it's strangely addictive. There's, there's just something, and I think Darren, uh, summed it up perfectly earlier. He says, there's just something, once you take off and you're in the air and you've got that all right and you're all set up and everything, there's just something quite relaxing. It's super therapeutic, I think. And you're just there and you're just like flying and you're, you know, doing these little adjustments, making sure you don't crash and all that sort of thing. And then it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm a little bit sad, but I don't know. I just find it quite amazing that I can like fly over my hometown, you know? Yeah. Um, this well, I think little, that's why loads of people are going to download it, you know? Yeah. This, this little town that I live in, in between Leicester and Coventry and it's there and, and it's actually in detail. I can make out certain parts of the town, mm. Like I can see, I can see the Crescent and everything. I could see the shopping, you know, Wow. I could make out Tesco's. I could see where work was. I landed the plane in works car park. Nice. But, you know, wonderful. Good, great stuff. It's a good job. Your work uh, has got an enormous car park to be fair. Yeah. It won't have soon. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be full of unaffordable houses anyway um but it's just you know forgetting all of that you know but obviously the um you know some of your 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 city you know your other cities and stuff like that like london and new york and stuff the detail is incredible and it, yeah. it just looks amazing and i don't there's i don't know there's just something great about flying around and i think it's because you don't get many games where that is something that you can do in a game. Yeah. Yeah. Driving cars, you can drive cars on pretty much on, on quite a, on a lot of games. GTA, oh, yeah, definitely, you can yeah. just be like, I'm going to drive around. Um, you know, obviously you've got a million and one driving, driving games out there, racing mm -hmm. games out there, whatever, whether it's formula one, uh, rally racing, whether it's Forza, Forza. you yeah. know, um, wreck fest, which is something slightly different again, you know, that getting in a car and driving around, that's kind of one of the it's almost its own genre in terms of in terms of video games. But flying is quite a unique thing. Yeah. Um, I feel in terms of in terms of a video game. 
Um, and, and what I do like about it, even though, look, it is not, it is not straightforward. Mm -mm. Um, I fucking suck at landing. Jesus. Yeah, I'm pretty um, awful at flying in general, to be honest. I mean, when, when I'm – some planes I can't – I'm not very good with at all. No, no. Uh, I, I've um, – <laughs> yeah, take – trying to land a jumbo jet. Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah, not good. Not good. But um, once you when, when, once you take off and you – I don't know. It's just it's just amazing. It's just great. Yeah. And it, it, visually, it looks it looks fantastic as well. Yeah. Um, and even on my uh, even even on my my Series S, you know, it looks great. Um, load times aren't all that quick. No, nope. in comparison to, but this is a it's a huge game. It's a huge game. Yeah, so I think what it's doing, and maybe the reason why it takes so long to load is because you, for them, you know, you you are actually loading up real life data. Yeah, so you've got like you can have live weather, you can have live. Um, live traffic in terms of you know um what's actually planes that are actually taking in the off sky yeah which right is now insane in, which is mad yeah absolutely mad you know i'm 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 waiting at to heathrow my little cessna waiting for a, a flight to to go off that's actually taking off at heathrow you know yeah. at that time and it's just it's, it's crazy just, it's mad and um yeah you can you can fly anywhere in the world and it's 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 mental yeah, it really it's is. It's just so crazy. Like, you, you know, you can either pick a spot to start in the air, or yeah, you know, cool. you, you you can pick uh, an airport, um, you know, wherever, and literally just sort of take your plane off from the runway. It's it's really insane. The level of detail when you're flying around is just it's crazy. Like we were. I mean, it it, it doesn't even it, it sorry it doesn't even have just it's not just a case of it having right. It's got um, the London airports, Birmingham, Manchester, um, Glasgow. It's got everything. It's got yep. all your. Li it's all got all your little airstrips. It's got your yep. RAF bases. It's got you know, like it, it's it's crazy. Um, you know, I I, uh, I I say that you've got all these places that you can go to around the world, and there I am flying from East Midlands to Leicester. Um, <laughs> so, you know, um, have you flown over the football stadium? No, I haven't yet. No, no, I'm going to. Assuming they're uh, there. I mean, they, they must be. Right? I would have thought so. I mean, the fact that the, uh, the the Crescent in Hinkley is on the game, I would have thought. But yeah, yeah I, I might do a bit of a, uh, I might do a bit of a fly around of all the football grounds. Yeah, that'd be pretty uh, cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Have a look, see what they look like. I'd imagine probably Wembley's the only one that's in real great detail. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, it's, it's taken from... It's taken from like real map data, isn't it? So like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I can't imagine they're not going to be in detail. Mm, yeah, but no, it, it's cool. And then there's a good there's a good selection of um, of planes on it as well. Um, yeah, really good. Not that yeah, I know sea, anything about planes, but no, not me. But I mean, you, you know, uh, seaplanes and you know, jumbo jets and all them little mm. little bean cans and uh, some of your bigger stuff as well. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's great. It's it's fantastic, and uh, I, I can't wait to jump back on it tonight for a couple of hours. Yeah, I mean, you know, the level of detail in it is so crazy. We were um, um, Kelly wanted to see Cyprus on it, so right because um, she's been there and you know a lot uh, a load of times, and mm. you know she pretty much knows the areas of certain places, so that we can yeah. sort of have a look, see how accurate it, it is. And she said to me, um, "You see those fields there? People just drive drive through them." Mm. Um, so, the, you know, you'll notice there's no roads there. Just, you know, people just drive through the fields because there's no nothing really um, yeah. dividing them. And then you, you you fly over one of them. Weirdly enough, there's a little car driving through one. Amazing. Unbelievable. Amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. It really Absolutely is. Absolutely unbelievable. It's it's a, I think it's a real technical achievement, especially for console gaming to be able to run something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, yeah. I mean, that that's a real testament to the power of, um, you know, not only the Xbox Series X, but the Xbox Series S as well. You know, you're processing, you know, a ridiculously um, in-depth PC game, essentially. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know I said that the load time aren't the quickest, but I'm comparing that to every other game that I've got. Oh well, yeah, you load FIFA up. You like got you're that. in a game in thirty seconds. You're in a game in thirty seconds. I'm not expecting that with flights because of just the level of detail. Yeah. It is just insane. I mean, even when you go into like 
even when you you kind of change the camera view and you're in the cockpit, mm. it's all there, and you can interact with absolutely yeah. everything. Um, and Christ, it is it's it's mind blowing, really. It really, really is. But um, yeah, the level of detail is crazy. I had a fly fly over New York, and it was uh, you know that was amazing. Just just to see because I've I've been I've only been there once, yeah. unfortunately, and it was just great. You know, uh, boring my daughter. I go, I've been there. I've been there. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I know, Dad. You told me. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, she tried to fly the plane. Uh, it lasted all of about five seconds. Uh, awesome, yeah. She was like, can I have a go? I was like, yeah, go on then. Uh, yeah, Imagine if she'd have just like absolutely bossed it. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking basically, she's she basically Maverick from Top Gun. I was going to say, yeah. She's just Maverick. She's there doing fucking twists and... Yeah, you know, inverting the plane and, and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, fantastic, great game. That's going to. Um, I can't see many other games getting a look in over the next few mm. weeks. Really. Yeah, um, it's it's just it's just it's just a fascinating game. You you want to go and explore. I mean, like you said, you can go literally, you know, over anywhere in the world. Mm. I mean, you've got like when you load the game up, you can. So they've they've got what they call discovery flights. So you can go yeah. to. You know, you can go to, um, you know, you can go to Giza, you can go to Bora Bora, you can go to uh, to Naples, uh, New York, Rio, uh, Rio, de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, fly straight past Christ the Redeemer, which is awesome. Um, but you know, you've got them, but you know, then you can just go into the free map, pick anywhere in the world, and just fly. And it's like, holy shit, this is honestly mind blowing. Mm. Yeah, really but if you if you've got an Xbox. You know, and I, I pretty much say this about anything with Game Pass. If you've got an Xbox Series it. X or S, because obviously it's not out on Xbox One, just try it. You know, it's uh, it might not be your kind of thing, and you know, it wouldn't have been my kind of thing before. But you know, the fact that it is on Game Pass and it's there readily for us to try, you just got to look at it. You've got to have a look at it and see it for yourself. Even if you just take one flight over the pyramids or wherever, just take a look at it. It it truly is. Um, a remarkable technical achievement, and also, you know, it's very accessible. You don't have to go fully in depth, pulling all the, all the stuff in the plane, and no, no. you doing all that. It's literally a case of press and hold A for the throttle, pull back on the stick, and fly. Yeah, I mean, the the training is quite in depth as well. Mm, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. And it's really, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say intense, but. It lets you know if you've not done great, but it also lets you know if you've done really well. And mm. you know, it really is a case of practice does make perfect and stuff. Yes, even if you just, yeah, yeah. I mean, even even if you just want to, um, you know, I, I've done it before where I've, I've I've taken off and everything, got up in the air, and then I've gone on to done, done the autopilot just so it can, you know, fly around, and I can yeah. I, I can then have a look around and and see what's going on and stuff. Um, yeah, I was just saying it, it's very, uh, it's, it's, it's a game where you're going to take a lot of screenshots. It really is. Oh, God, I've taken so many already. Yeah, I've taken loads, loads. And I need to figure out how to do that active pause, uh, thing that, that yeah, was on um, about. yeah, I remember he said it was like, it's like somewhere yeah, in the options. Yeah. I, I, I saw I a look, notification for it, but yeah, I, 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 keep, I, get, really I keep getting the that. notification, but, um, but yeah, um, but yeah, in terms of in terms of gaming, that's about what well, the only other the only other uh, gaming that I've, uh, I've I've done is uh, we've been having a bit of a back and forth, haven't we? On mm, um, we have on uh, on iMessenger playing uh, archery. We are yeah. we are quite the Robin Hoods, aren't we? We are, yeah. I mean, oh, William right. Tell, Robin Hood, Green Arrow, Hawkeye, all those guys, all the um, all the above. all the all, all the uh, all the realistic um, arrow people um definitely their name archers oh, yeah so on <laughs> jeffries on, uh, <laughs> on, on iphones there's basically like an app you can install called game pigeon and it has loads of uh, like little games that you can sort of take your turn and then it sends it to the other the recipient they they, they take their turn so on and so forth but yeah we've been playing archery and yeah we've gotten real good at it mm. some close games some, some really close games, games. But it was funny, it's funny. I was just, just uh, I was sitting at my desk yesterday working, and um, just the notification popped up and just said archery. So I knew. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, it's on! It's on! Yeah, Here it's we on. go! Let's do it's this!" On. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was walking around. Uh, I was I was walking <laughs> walking around right and pools yesterday, and uh, I was like, "What are you doing?" Like, just one second. Oh, true. <laughs> oh God, I got, I got an eight. What am I doing? I know. You know what? Anything below a nine, I'm fuming. Oh I, yeah, I am as well. Yeah, I am as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I like, if I get 20, 24 or twenty five score, livid. Yeah, I mean, you, the thing is, you, you got one the other, you won yesterday where you got twenty four, and I was like, oh, I've got this in the bag. And then the first two, I was like, oh shit. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I need a 10 now. I think I've got like two sevens. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, God. And uh, I was like, oh. Yeah, I, I think you got it. like an eight and like just I got an it. eight. Yeah, I took, I took it. I'm far too relaxed. Far too relaxed. But yeah, I thought I, you had it in the bag. Though. Yeah. But look, we'll, we'll carry on. We'll, we'll carry this on. It's good yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Those games are way too fun. Oh, they are. They're just, just easy, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you've been easy. playing AEW Elite General Manager on your phone as well, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hmm. Tell me about it. It's cool. Yeah. I like it. Um, but I find okay. that it's gotten boring very quick. Okay. Um, I know it's new and I know it's a mobile game. So and I know it's free. Yes. There's in-app purchases, et cetera, et cetera. But I think there's that did a bit of research. There's quite clearly still a few bugs with it. Uh, when you're doing the endless, um, GM mode, which is just week on week booking mm-hmm. a show. Uh, it seems book in the territory, book, book the territory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God bless Steve Austin. Um, yeah, yeah there's, um, th- there seems to be a bug where you can't change out your gimmicks. So right. where you can give, where you can give uh, a sign of wrestling, like a chair or the golf cart and stuff. And then because of that, you keep using the same gimmicks. You start losing fans. Mm-hmm. around about sort of week 20, 21, 22, no, that sort of era, area. So that's something that needs sorting. And I think what I would like to see a bit more, just to keep it interesting, uh, so that you do keep going back and thinking, actually, I'm going to book another, you know, I'm going to do another four weeks on it. I'd like to see pay-per-views chucked in, and I'd like to see different match options. Okay. I.e., you know, give us a cage match. Give us, you know, ladder matches. Give us exploding barbed wire death, you know, sprinkler, whatever match that was. Um, you know, just... Yeah, just give just, us the fireworks night, sparkler give it, give us, show. Yeah, give us, a, give us bonfire night. Um, you know, just, just stuff like that. And then, you know, mix it up. Because it, I, I find it has got kind of boring quite quickly. And, and then there's, there's a still a few sort of bugs in it. The challenges are cool, though. The challenges are really good. And that that kind of... You know, um, gets you gets you thinking a bit more rather than just a one on one, three way, yeah. tag match. Uh, you know all that, and I, I think it, if they could just build in something a bit more, where you know, if, if you've you can book someone to be dominant, you can be, book someone to be a jobber. You know, just a little bit more, a little bit more in depth. Again, I know it's mm. a mobile game, I know it's free, but you know. It can be done. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely more that they can do with it for sure, mm. you know. Um, and I think they will. I think it's something they'll you know, work on over time. This is AEW's first real sort of foray into into gaming. I know they've done that p- p- bullshit gambling game or whatever, but that's... Ooh, not looked at that. Uh, crap. Um, but this, you know, it's a proper AEW game. And, yeah, I, I think they'll work on it over time. Mm. Um, I like the art know, style. The art style is great. It yeah, looks, it's really it cool. Great. I like it. Yeah. So, but, but it's it's there. It's on my phone. Oh, I got quite excited the other day because they've updated the um, the the app icon. I was like, oh, maybe they've done an update. But it was just that. No, so, no. Um, but I'll, I'll keep it on my phone and keep checking in to see if it's you know been improved or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's just it's it's a it's a bit of fun, but I think it could be better. That's fair enough. And I totally agree with you. Everything mm. you said, I totally agree with. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like anything, really, I suppose. I mean, WWE Supercard, which I love still, um, you know, was pretty bare bones at the at the very beginning. Mm. And now it's like now evolved it's, uh, into this. I mean, it's mind-blowing now how good yeah. that game actually is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I do hold, hold out hope for AEW Elite General Manager, and I'm sure it will get better over time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I haven't been playing an awful lot this week either. I mean, like you, I've been playing Flight, flight Simulator and it was something that I was, you know, really excited for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, that, you know, most when I've been gaming um, and I, again, I haven't had a lot of time, I've been playing that. And I've also been playing um, mainly sort of late late night. I've been playing the uh, new Mario Golf game for the Switch. Oh, cool! Uh, which is great. Um, I've only played like a few rounds of actual golf. I've not sort of tried the rush mode yet, where you can like you you hit your ball, chase your ball, keep going. And it's like a race to whoever. Yeah. I, to, I don't know, but I, I'm I it, as a game, um, it's very solid. Yeah, and, you know, like any Nintendo game with the Mario yeah. branding what, on it. What it's very. Yeah, it's very polished. It's very good. Uh, technically, it's a very good sports game. Uh, you know, with it being Mario, they do add like super shots in and all that sort of stuff. Although, from what I've experienced so far, they're actually pointless. <laughs> it's not like in Mario Tennis where you have your super shots and it basically just annihilates the ball across the court and you get you guarantee the point. With the super shots, it's just an animation. Basically, it's literally just an animation. But um, there may be more to it. Um, but like I said, I mean, I've, I've not really uh, took a deep dive into it yet, but I will do. I'm, I'm going away um, next week, um, next weekend. So I'm going to take uh, my Switch with me and um, crack on with Zelda, uh, Skyward Sword, and also uh, play a bit more Mario Golf. But uh, I've got the, the Ascent downloaded on my Xbox, which I'm really looking forward to. That unlocked earlier today. It's been getting good reviews. Mm. Um, it's like a Diablo style um, RPG set in like a cyberpunk esque world, and it looks so good. And I can't wait to see how it looks on the Series X because the mm. trailers that I watched made it look just fucking awesome. Yeah. So I'm I'm really really excited for that. Cool. Um, I've been meaning to ask, what did you make all this um, FIFA and PES stuff that's been going on over the last you know few days? to a week i mean obviously pez is going free to play me and finn talked about it you know on the podcast mm. last week but obviously finn he's not a sports game fan so while it's just the two of us you know it probably is a, a better forum to talk about it so um let's start with pez obviously it's going free to play um you've been playing the latest pez 2021 mm. season update what do you think of all what do you think of this this move by konami to do this to, to pez I think it's a shame that it's lost the name because that's what everyone knows it as, Pairs, Pro yeah. Evo, whatever. I think it's a bit of a shame uh, that it that it has has lost its name. But I, I totally agree with what 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 you said on the, on the pod last week was that look, they can't compete sales with mm -hmm. with with FIFA. Um, I also agree with what you said that most sports games should just be a yearly update. Mm -hmm. You know, seven. Uh, 70 quid for the new FIFA. That's crazy. I, I don't even want to, you know, I, I, I did it last year um, out of the sheer excitement of having a next-gen console and there being a next-gen version of FIFA. And I was like, oh my, mm -hmm. God, oh, my God. That is literally the only game I have paid for. And I have barely played it because of Game Pass and, you know, and, and whatnot. And I've barely played it. And I've even, you know, got and then ended up downloading PES uh, yeah. and, and playing that because it's, just something different, and and then you know, it, it it's it's weird with FIFA. It's gonna it's one of those things where it's always going to be popular. I mean, yeah. it did have its years where it wasn't as good, and Pro Evo was the was the um, more popular game. Um, it's always going to be popular, even if it's a bag of you know bag of nails as of a game. Yeah, you know, it could be absolutely terrible, and people will still play it, still pile money into Ultimate Team, mm -hmm. um, and and I do hope that they just that they do eventually go the way of just a season update. Yeah, I mean, I, I really hope that does happen. I mean, for so me, half the price or less. You yeah, know, even but... even if it even if it's like, you know, I'll oh, get the FIFA twenty three update for thirty quid. All right, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. Because tell, me what point, you've improved. How... Tell, tell me what you've improved and, and because again uh, sorry to cut you off but you no, know no, not at all. it's like when uh, we, um we put the someone it might have been darren it was definitely darren put the put the trailer in uh, in the group chat and you said exactly what i was thinking it looks like the same fifa trailer from the last 10 years yeah 
just a load of players doing unrealistic skills, not gameplay footage, with all your star names, look great, you know, excellent. Can't 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 deny that. You know, graphically no. it looks looks fantastic. And you're like, okay, well, it, well, it's FIFA. It's FIFA. Yeah. You know, the menus have looked the same for God knows how many years. Career mode is still there. Um, and unless you're willing to spend, you know, uh, a load of money on Ultimate Team, which I'm not, um, it, it doesn't become overly enjoyable. And I've really no, found that, you know, this is the first, this is the first FIFA for, I've had every FIFA now since 09. Um, okay. Before that, it was Pro Evo. And then I had, I had FIFA, obviously, when I was a kid, you know. 95 yeah. and you know up, up, up to probably 98 99 um and this is the first one that i've i've barely put any hours into this one and whether it's because my taste in gaming has changed or whether because i've got game pass and I'm, I'm now you know um got so much more you know so many more options to to hand mm -hmm. i don't i'm not just spending hours and hours playing playing fifa so um yeah, smart move by Pro Evo. I hope it's good. Sorry, eFootball um, or Konami, whatever. Um, I, I, I hope it's. Um, I hope it's good. You know, I mm -hmm. hope. I hope it's. Um, and, I, and I hope people give it a chance. You know, and don't just think, oh, it's free. It must be crap. I think um, that's the. I think that's the main thing here, and I think it's smart of them in that sense because they're basically trying to tap into that free to play market. You know, like yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. Um, Apex Legends, that kind of thing. But, you know, it could be... I mean, you know, they've put some very popular... You know, they've put some very interesting stuff on there, which does make it sound fairly mm. promising, like how it is going to utilise the power of the PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S. Yeah. And, you know, because people were concerned because, you know, you can play, um, you know, on the consoles that we own against people who play on mobile. Mm. But the it's going to be... The same game, but different. Yeah. Which is what I expected. I mean, you know, you can play Fortnite against people on mobile phone on console. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't handle the same. You know, for no. a start, using a touchscreen mobile phone for the most part. You know, so th th I think those worries, whilst warranted, you know, I think maybe people, it was sort of maybe a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction from people, you know, and mm. didn't think about it so much because, you know, PUBG, I'm not sure about PUBG, but definitely Fortnite uh, and games like that. You know, I, I've got I've downloaded and played Fortnite on Switch, and it looks okay. You know, it looks mm -hmm. like a Switch game, but then you play it on like Xbox or PS5, and it looks incredible. Like the the yeah. the level of animation is above and beyond that on the mm. Switch because the, there's a, the the power difference is there, and yeah. that'll be the same for Pez. You know, the um, I played the uh, the server test for eFootball which was just titled New Football Game. But that isn't what the game's going to look like. No, no. Like, there's no. literally just a server test pulled from, you know, a very, very early version of what the game will be. But it's not going to play like a mobile version. It'll play like a next-generation mm. version of PES. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, think it'll be, I think it'll be fine. And look, again, it's going to be free. Just, yeah. <laughs> just try it. But um, just sort of on the, on the whole thing about you know, Pez versus versus FIFA. I was listening to Talksport the other day, and they actually they mentioned it. They said okay. that Pro Evo Pro Evolution Soccer is going to be no more. It is now changing to eFootball. It's going to be a free to play game. And then they did a little a little segment with uh, two of the ex-pros that were on there it was trevor sinclair and jamie o'hara and they said right, right. then uh, so they were talking about you know they were like oh did you play pro evo back in the day and he's like oh yeah yeah I used to love pro evo and all of that but you know well my kids all they all play fifa now and blah 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 and then they did a little segment where it was like what's your what was what was their fifa rating on FIFA 09 or whatever, because that's when they were that's when they were playing. Yeah. And and whilst I was listening to it and it was good fun, it was a fun fun segment and all that on on the radio, I thought to myself, this segment started talking about Pro Evo, and within two minutes you you you're talking FIFA. And, yeah. and, and do you know what I mean? And that just kind of that's that summed the whole thing up for me was yeah. the fact that it's about it was about Pro Evo within two minutes they're talking about FIFA. 
Yeah, and I think and, and you know, it's not a gaming show. It's it's no. a, it's it's talk sport with a couple of you know it's it's the morning show on talk sport. Blah blah blah. It's not what they're there for. They're not there to talk about games. But you know they didn't use old Pro Evo game. Oh, what was your rating on Pro Evo? No, straight away talking about FIFA. And I think that just shows the 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 kind of the popularity of that of of, of FIFA. Yeah, and I think that's why Pez, um, you know, another reason all over the world, I think it's the biggest sports game in the world like yeah. in terms of sales and popularity. Yeah, it will be, yeah. But I think, yeah. That, you know, that's another thing. I think EA have got lazy. They rely on buzzwords uh, to sell, Hype motion, you know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They use buzzwords to sell the game every year and, you know, promises that never really ever come to fruition. But, you know, going back to Pez, you know, it, it's really – it's been playing catch up for a lot a while now. So I think, you know, like I mentioned last week, they can't compete in terms of sales. So they need to do something that's going to bring pairs, you know, to a, to a wider audience and mm. going free to play definitely is, you know, the way to do it. I think yeah. the success and the popularity of the mobile version of the game um, has probably spurred this decision on a little bit. Right. Uh, because the, I, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, the, the mobile version does do quite well in terms of downloads mm. and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, uh, free to play, people probably are going to take a punt. And, you know, if they if they enjoy the game, obviously they're bringing the, um, the offline modes such as Master League and stuff like that. They're, they're going to be coming, you know, at a price uh, after launch. So if they like the game, you know, and Master League is 15 quid or whatever, um, they're, go they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to, if, if they like it, they're going to take a punt yeah. and, and pay the money for it. And that that's where the success has got to come from. Mm. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, FIFA, if, if this goes well and it could be a game changer in terms of the way we look at sports games going forward. I mean, you know, the last few NBA games, they've, they've, they've all been fantastic. Um, but you know, really they're, they're, they're not, all that too far removed from one another. Same so you game, could just do a, different teams, new kids. Exactly. You know, and the NBA games now, 2K, uh, they rely heavily on microtransactions for the for the my team aspect of it. Yeah. So, you know, why not just bring a free to play version of the game out and let people um you know play the game because you'll probably hit a bigger audience. Yeah, it sells well, but uh, you gotta believe those sales are dwindling. Mm. Um and you know, just so just you know, have people pay for the my team stuff, yeah, but make the base game free to play. You know, I'm not saying give the whole game away for free because I know the games cost money to make, obviously, of course. but you know, give an element of the game away for free. And if people like the game, um, they can then purchase the bits of the game that they want to play, yeah. Like for me, you know, I, I, I'm lucky enough, I haven't uh, had to buy the NBA game for the last you know, two or three years, um due to being sent code from TK, which obviously I'm very grateful for, but not everybody is in that same position. No. So, you know, the NBA game comes out, it's 70 quid. And that's a lot of fucking money. It's, it's a lot of money. For people in this country who, you know, don't or can't follow the NBA for whatever reason, mm. but are interested yeah, yeah. in the game. Yeah, for sure. So a free-to-play model with, you know, microtransactions and things of that nature, you know, I think would be good for... for all sports games, not just FIFA and PES, you know, like Madden, NBA, mm. um, MLB, all, all of them kind of things could, you know, it could, it could really, providing it goes well and is good, it could really trigger off a new generation um, of the way that sports games work. Yeah, and and I guess it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier in terms of, you know, I paid, I paid 70 quid for the um, next-gen version of FIFA. Yeah. I don't think I've played a single game. I don't think I've played foot once, Ultimate Team once. Certainly not touch Volta. I, I just don't. And I think to myself, why am I paying what, 70 quid to play a career mode, which isn't yeah. even that good? No, that's or it. Even, or even that intuitive or in-depth. You know, it almost feels like with, with the career mode with FIFA, it's almost like the people making the game don't watch football. Uh, or have no interest in football. No, you're right. Because of, th of the things that happen in career mode, you're like, that had never happened in real life. What the what the hell's going on? Um, yeah, so you know, I, I would I, I would much prefer a, a kind of a like you say something that's free to play, and then it's like right, if you want career mode, it's this much. If you want ultimate team, it's this much. You know, yeah, that would be that, and you know, and, and you could almost kind of have a a custom a custom version of your game. Exactly, yeah, because people will still 
you know, be so, you know, into Ultimate Team. And that that's where EA, after FIFA comes out, that's, that's where, where the money's made. Yeah, I, mean, I guess just... that's why career mode isn't, is it probably isn't. They, they don't spend the, the time on it, do they? All the money no. on it. Because we, that's you not know, quite it... much, that's, that doesn't make them the money, you know? No. No, it doesn't. Not at all. But, um, um, guys, just sorry, I've just been, um, We've had a couple of comments on YouTube. Obviously, people were expecting us to go live tonight um, with episode 150. Um, apologies. We did put on social media that it was going to be next week now. But if you didn't get the memo, um, apologies. But we will be here next week with a live episode 150. Um, but for now, you've got this um, chat-heavy episode 149.9. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate you coming along either way. And it, you know, it's it's to be honest, that's really nice that people are really are looking out for the live show. But that's great. Um, yeah. yeah, next next week, one hundred percent, we will be here with episode one hundred and fifty live, all three of us, and it's going to be a good time. Good time, good time, yeah, man, for sure. Um, right. I mean, have you uh, have you watched any wrestling this week? Uh, I watched SmackDown. I have a vague idea of what happened on Raw. I think. And that is it. I have been. I've been a busy old boy this week. Yeah, been it's been a. Boy. It's it's been a busy time. I had a busy weekend as well because it was the first time I've been able to sort of uh, get out of the house properly. Uh, when mug delivering, then came to see yourself. Um, you did and that, that was good, much much needed. But yeah, I managed to uh, watch a bit of wrestling myself, mm. and you know what? It's so good just to see fans back. Ah, oh, amazing! Makes all the difference. SmackDown has been fantastic with with fans. It's yeah. made a huge difference. It's really interesting to see the reaction that people are getting. Mm -hmm. You know, Reigns is getting cheered because he's now fucking awesome, but also booed because he's a heel, which is great. Um, they're booing him in the right places. The, yeah. the, the pop for Cena every time he comes out is unbelievable. Like, nobody is singing John Cena sucks. No. Like, nobody. Uh, it's amazing. And he's in on he was never likely to, but he's not missed a step, has he? Jesus, he, he's just no. come out. It's like he's never been away. Unbelievable. Um, it's like Edge as well. Same, like you know, oh, same huge reactions. Yeah, yeah, amazing. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not um, dwindled. You know, that thing of seeing Edge, you know, is is no. still not is not dwindled. And uh, you know, this this program that him and Rollins are heading into, I I can't wait. You know, oh yeah, I'm here for it for sure. It's it's, it's kind of. It's almost like dream match sort of territory. You know, you go back three or four yeah. years when obviously Edge wasn't. I mean, what? Well, I mean, I, I can't believe that that um, the uh, the the bluffed uh, when he bluffed the 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 stomp. He was going to curb stomp Edge. Yeah, I can't believe that was seven years ago. I oh, know I can't. I, I'd have probably said four at a push if someone had have asked me. Yeah, seven years ago. So and 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 then even then when it happened, I was like, I, I'd probably said it to you. I was like. Fucking hell. imagine these two having a match, you know, Edge yeah. in his prime. I mean, and but I mean, even though Edge isn't in his prime, he's still great, you know. He, he's, not yeah, he looks step. he doesn't look, he just he's in the best shape of his life. So, you know, it's it's dream match stuff, you know, Rollins versus Edge for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's quite interesting with WWE at the minute because, um, when, when I say interesting, what I mean is. Um, I, I feel like they're in a real transition period of mm. figuring out a, a direction where to go. Because, yeah. you know, SummerSlam, we're going to get Roman Reigns versus John Cena, obviously. Um, we're going to get Seth Rollins versus Edge. So, you know, they're relying on the, you know, the, the, the already established stars to sort of carry this through. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting to see new faces pop up on Raw, like Karrion Cross, for example. Um, uh, you know, Keith Lee's just come back. Yeah. And, you know, so you can see what they're trying to do. It's just the way that they're executing it isn't quite there yet. Mm. I think, personally, they're gearing up for the draft, and I think that's when um, things will really start to change. But I think as you build towards SummerSlam, and obviously they what they want it to do, what they want SummerSlam to be is like a WrestleMania equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. So you are going to get these big marquee matches. So fans have come back at the right time, but it also means WWE in, in a roundabout way can be a little bit lazy, um, you know, like they have been for some time, um, you know, uh, and book safe matches 
that mm. they know people will tune in for. I mean, look, do, do we want to see Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam for the title? No, probably not. No. But, you know, it's an interesting matchup for people. You know, it's it's easy just to throw Goldberg in there instead of him, instead of Bobby Lashley just starting a new program with somebody um, somebody new and then they've, they've only got like three weeks or whatever to build up this new mm. program with somebody new. So you throw Goldberg in there. It's easy. Goldberg can just turn up and go, oh, yeah, I'm Goldberg, blah, blah, blah. I can beat yeah, you probably. Next, yeah. And Bobby Lashley, um, you know, can pretend to be, you know, shook of Goldberg one week, but then beat him up the next. And, you know, that that's so, that's so easy to do. So is, WWE yeah. are getting away with it at the minute in the build to SummerSlam because, you know, they, they because they can. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I know SummerSlam that, with the draft coming up, that's when you know people are going to start to want change, want to see different things, want to see you know new stars built, want to see because you can't rely on bringing Cena back forever. No, no, this is this is what I was about to say. It's like it's okay for now, you know, fans are back, we're all you know, everyone's excited to be doing stuff again, you know. Um, everyone's everyone's just like, oh god, we've got freedom, you know. So yeah, everyone's there to have a good time. Whereas you know, pre-COVID, you, especially with with wrestling, I mean, there's always I think no one hates wrestling more than wrestling fans. Yeah. And it's almost like people were were going to WWE shows and they're like, oh god, what we're going to watch this week, you know. Yeah. And then that's how. It, but now it's like, oh my god, we're at a live show. This is amazing, and you know. Um, so yeah, like you say, they absolutely they can get away with bringing back Cena, Goldberg. You know, there's talk of uh, the Rock coming back at some point. There's yeah. talk of Brock coming back at some point as well, um, and that's great. That that is great. But eventually, you know, we want to see these. You know, Keith Lee, Ricochet. You know, um, get those sorts of guys. You know, carrying Cross, bringing him up. Um, they These increase, guys, you know, new generations they, of stars. They need to be. They need to be. Yeah, they need to be the new generation, uh, and they need to be taking the taking the company forward. And there needs to be a bit of trust put into them. Um, yeah. Because you need a new those, big baby face. Because who who's your course. big baby face at the minute? They wanted it to be Drew. I don't think it's worked out that way. No, I don't think it's worked out. I think people have gotten a bit stale of it. It's, it's gotten mm -hmm. it's gotten stale, and people have gotten a little bit bored of it uh i mean he's not he's not getting booed or anything but um there's been a little bit of negative reaction to him though uh, yeah you can see it on uh from what i've heard um you know on social media there you know there's the comments of oh stop booking this guy stop shoving this guy down our throat blah 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 uh, but again You're that's a huge problem that. yeah i mean yeah. i think with drew he was one of the ones holding it down during the pandemic era so you know he'd start raw then he'd have another promo in the middle of raw like a backstage yeah. segment and then he'd have a match at the end of Raw. And it would be, it would basically be, Raw would basically be the Drew McIntyre show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had it, yeah. We, we, I mean, you, we, we've talked about it on the pod where you've got the likes of Drew pulling double duty on Raw. And it's like, yeah. why? Yeah. When you've got, at the time, you've got Alistair Black doing nothing. You've got Keith Lee doing nothing. You've got all these great guys in NXT. But no... Let's have Drew McIntyre pull double duty and do a promo on the second hour and the start mm -hmm. of the third hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, with the roster yeah, so uh, deep, WWE just don't need to do that. I mean, no, you know, no. we, 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 we can say it till we're blue in the face. I mean, well, I'm sure we have said it a million times on this podcast, but when you've got such a deep roster, uh, I think you need somebody, you need somebody with fresh ideas behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And you know, I, I really, I, I really think with with the the rumors, or you know, I don't even think they're rumors anymore. But with AEW looking like they're going to be getting Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, American Dragon, whatever you want to yep. call him, uh, um, um, and um, and CM Punk, that's going to put them. That's going to put them on a different level. Oh my god! You I mean, know, it, like, and, and WWE will need to react because, yeah, to unbelievable, you know, massive. I mean, the clamber for CM Punk to come back, yeah, um, has been, yeah. You know, how long has it been now? Seven years, eight years, something yeah, like yeah. that. 
you know, and then it looks like it's going to happen. It's almost a cert that it's going to happen. You know, yeah. AEW have got shows in Chicago in September. It's, it's um, and also on this week's dynamite. Real. Yeah, they they announced they alluded that, to it, um, didn't they? They did, but they also announced um, so their second show, which starts soon, um, August thirteenth, AEW Rampage. Um, wow. The second of that new show on uh, the 20th of August, uh, they've announced that it's going to be at the Old State Arena in Chicago, hmm. which led to a youth, a, you know, an unbelievably loud CM Punk chant. Yeah. And then it cut to Darby Allen in the back, who basically cut a promo saying, you know, you've got to prove yourself here in AEW, even if you consider yourself to be the best in the world. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. So it, it's happening. I mean, I think, you know, Daniel Bryan, um, Brian Danielson as he's going to be, you know, um, you know, going yeah. to AEW. The guy just main evented WrestleMania, exactly this yeah. year. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, like people but, are going on about CM Punk and stuff, but you know, the people are really sort of not playing the fact that Daniel Bryan is going to go to AEW up enough. I mean, that's no, crazy. No. He was like WWE champion not even that long ago. No, no. Um, but it seems that AEW are going to give. Uh, give him what he wants, which is yeah. uh, a slightly reduced schedule on similar money and an opportunity to wrestle in Japan. And yeah. AEW ticked all the boxes for him. So that's great. Obviously, they've got uh, our Tommy Black Endies there as well. Uh, yeah. Andrade's there as well. So, you know, and then you add in the guys that are already MJF, Jericho, um, you know, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega. <laughs> It's just what I mean, the list of talent is endless, what isn't a it? A roster, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, WWE need to do something, and and there's but there's only so long that they can get away with. Let's bring back Brock Lesnar. Let's bring the Rock in. Let's yeah. Cena come back because Cena's gonna. He's like, oh, I'm here. I'm here to stay. No, you've not. You've got Fast and Furious 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 to film. So, yeah, I mean, um, you know, we, we know that he's filming other stuff. <laughs> we know he, he's filming that thing in, is it in London or is he already? Yeah, it's over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's filming uh, that uh, new film franchise with uh, Brian Cranston. So, yeah, um, he's not going to be around forever. So, yeah, some some fresh ideas and, and push your, push your, uh, I say up and coming. I mean, Ricochet's probably been there five years now, hasn't he? Some... <laughs> yeah, probably. But, yeah. you know, start, start he, utilizing him. It's the time to start taking risks. Yeah, of course. You know, it's... WWE like to play it safe, and that, that's exactly what this booking leading up to SummerSlam is. It's yeah. safe. Because people fine. will want to see Cena versus Reigns. People will want to see Goldberg versus Lashley. You know, um, people will, um, you know, want to see Edge wrestle Seth Rollins. So it's, it's easy. And it's yeah. lazy. Yeah. And you can bring you know, Becky back if she's, if she's ready. And exactly, you know, you, know, you can, the, but the, you're right in what you say. There's only so long that you can coast along with, yeah, um, with that kind of booking because, mm. you know, after SummerSlam, these people are going to vanish. Then what? Yeah. Yeah. Bobby Lashley's still going to be champion. Roman Reigns is still going to be the champion. Um, and, um, Edge may very well have beaten Seth Rollins, which I anticipate would probably happen. But yeah. you know, but then what? Charlotte will probably be the champion because they've not really taken a punt on Nikki. Yeah, you know, yeah. so Charlotte will be champion again, and you're almost like you're back at square one. So then, mm. what do you do to freshen it up? I mean, yeah, you, they're lucky because they've got the draft coming up. Um, I'm not sure if it's first week in September or something like that. But you know, they they have to start taking risks. They have to start. And, you know, I know they don't want to pander to the internet wrestling fans, but they have to start pushing people that, you know, the talent that people want to see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, have Finn Balor challenge Roman Reigns. I know he did on the end of SmackDown, but, you know, have that be a thing. You know, have Finn Balor up there and amongst it. Yeah. You know, you, you know you, they, they're so stupid. Like, they, you know, the excitement when it was announced that Samoa Joe was going to be an active member of the NXT roster again. He's going to fight Karrion Cross the night after SummerSlam for the NXT title. You know, you know, they're, they're the guys that people want to see. Yeah. We don't want to see Jackson Riker, you know? <laughs> you, you really have to, they really have to start paying attention to the, the, the wider world. Mm. And, you know, 
stop listening to, and I hate using this term because, you know, there's a lot of, there's people that have done a lot of good in the business, um, you know, back in the day who you know, do have a say behind the scenes, but you have to start listening to, to stop listening to, to dinosaurs who think yeah. that, that the big muscly man needs to be the world champion. Yeah. And I think as well, they don't, they don't help them. WWE don't help themselves when they don't, Oh, sorry. When they hire writers that aren't wrestling fans, yeah, which became clear a few weeks ago when that when that um, when that woman got sacked uh, because she went onto a podcast and didn't know Bobby Lashley's name, and um, you know, I mean, I, I watched it. I watched a YouTube video uh, a while back of someone applying for a job with WWE as a okay. as a writer, and it actually said on there. Um, you don't need a background in wrestling. Okay, that's fine. Um, but you also don't need to have in-depth knowledge of the business or even be a fan. It was to that effect, which See, I think that, that's is, where... is bizarre. I think it's bizarre. I, I just think it's really, re I think it's really, really bizarre. It'd be like, uh, I don't know. Well, it's like applying for a job and having no experience in uh, in well, any capacity in the role that you're going for. It, well, it'd be like someone that's that's... You know, someone that is specifically a comedy writer. Yeah. And then saying, oh, can you write the next uh, James Bond film, please? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of a, well, yeah, I could do, but it might not work. Yeah, um, that's not really my forte. You know, you want yeah. to write, you know, the thing with comedy, it can come natural. A lot of these guys yeah. that uh, are in WWE are, you know, naturally very funny. You've got mm. people like Dolph Ziggler, you know, they just stand up comedy on the side. Very funny. Big yeah. E, very funny. Xavier Woods, hilarious. You know, a lot of these guys, they, you know, they're real people with real personalities. You've got yeah. to let them shine through a little bit, yeah. you know, and, you know, they, they can be funny. It doesn't need to be forced. Comedy yeah. doesn't need to be forced. It just doesn't. You know, as long as there's some sort of basic direction in terms of who's going for the championships. I mean, to be honest, for me, that's all the storyline needs to be, you know, in, yeah. in terms of the championships. Um, you know, I'm the number one contender. I'm going for that championship. The next few weeks, we're going to go back and forth. I'm going to beat you up. You're going to beat me up. You know, there's, there's so many different ways that you can write that and do that. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. it doesn't have to be as generic as I've just made it sound because, you know, there's no, it, it a load be. of different ways it can be done. Yeah, but it, it, it can be as generic as that. I mean, I remember, I always remember, yeah, I don't know why this always sticks in my mind, but I remember Kane and Jericho had a feud probably late 90s, early 2000, probably 2000, 2001. All started because uh, Kane was holding some coffee or, the, or Jericho was, and one of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, that is, you know, I, I remember that. I do remember that. And, you know, if you, it doesn't need to be complicated. It just doesn't. Um, but WWE, they, they really do overcomplicate it. They want to have them, you know, they want to have, like, soap opera style storylines. But that, you know, the one that you were alluding to um, mm. just then with Jericho, um, I think I can't remember which one of the two was holding the coffee. I know which one you mean. Though. Yeah, you know which one I mean, though, and that's how it and that's how it started. And it was as simple as that. And it's like, okay, these are two great wrestlers. Let them have some matches. Let them have a yeah. little feud. Doesn't have to I be mean, for it, a title. It can be generic because you know, realistically, these guys again they have their own personalities, and they all have a different skill set in terms of moves. So mm -hmm. and the way that they can deliver on the platform. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be. You know, it's not always going to be. Not everyone just does a scoop slam anymore. Not everybody yeah. just does a clothesline anymore. You know, um, there's there's just so many different ways that you can do it without overcomplicating it. Yeah, I think it's. Um, but WWE want it to be a soap opera. They want it to well, be. Well, they want a it, big TV production. Well, they want it to be. They 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 want it to be um, similar to the Marvel universe. In that it's this big cinematic thing that these that the wrestlers are characters that have story arcs. That's what they want, mm -hmm. and it's like it's at the end of the wrestling. day. I just want yeah. to watch re a wrestling match. I want at to at the watch, end of the day. I want to watch two people, wrestling. two 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 blokes, two women, whatever for tag team, whatever have great wrestling matches, showing off yeah. their you know make it unique, do something different. Um, 
but I just want to see wrestling. Man. I don't want to see, you know, there's some things work. I mean, this, this thing with Baron Corbin is, is fairly funny. Um, yeah. and it adds something different to him. Um, but again, they'll, they'll ruin that. Um, probably, but, but yeah, I just, um, I think for me, WWE is almost a bit, it's too polished. It's way too polished. It yeah. Tries I mean, you too look hard. at AW. It, it tries too AW, hard. It's a little bit rough around the edges at times. Yeah, it's it's great. a great production, really good production yeah. in AEW, but it's a little bit rough around the edges. But at the end of the day, it, it is professional wrestling. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, um, you know, an Emmy award winning TV series, is it? It's not, no. you know, it's not a comedy show. It's not, um, you know, a, a you know, explosions and gun firing action show. It's no. professional wrestling. I People... think I think it's South Park. South Park made it. Like, like they they summed it up. Okay, yeah, I know it's satire and everything, but they summed it up, didn't they? They, they started did. a they started a backyard wrestling show, which then drew loads of crowd, and it was just and then it just ended up being these really stupid storylines. Actually, yeah. no wrestling. And then when they did start wrestling, the crowd were like, "Oh, what's this crap? Ah, oh, see ya." And that that was a that was a dig. Uh, that was definitely a dig yeah, at WWE. Well, Vince McMahon was in it, wasn't he? Um, or a depiction of. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's what it is. I just want to see wrestling matches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but the, but the the worst of it is, I think that's what WWE and the higher ups think wrestling should be now a big TV yeah. show and yeah. not so much a wrestling show. But you, mm. you know, the best wrestling show I watched last week was Impact. Yeah, I thought from top to bottom, I thought the show was absolutely incredible. You know, it's great to see uh, fans back, although they don't have many in the impact zone. But, mm. you know, it was a really great show. And of course, you know, now that the uh, quote unquote forbidden door is open, you know, you had Jay White cutting an incredible promo um, on there and you had really great matches. And it's just it was just a very well put together couple of hours of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, eight, 86 minutes without adverts is what it is. A um, impact, and you know that you know that that is as long as wrestling needs to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. you've got some storylines that are um, you, you, you've got some storylines, but they're not outlandish and overblown. They don't outstay their segment. They don't outstay their welcome. They're just you know they're there to serve a purpose to eventually have a match and then they move on to something else. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't need to be complicated doesn't need to be award-winning acting because you're never going to get that at no. the end of the day it's pro wrestling and that's why so many pro wrestling fans of uh you know especially of of our age and um you know around our age and a bit younger that's why they're gravitating towards aew and but they're giving us sort of stuff that you know people really haven't seen before they're giving us the new japan stuff i mean tanahashi mm. was on uh, AEW yeah. this week um, you know, cutting a vignette um, on uh, Lance Archer because he's going to challenge for the IWGP Championship, United States Championship. And then Mox cut a promo on Tanahashi as well. You know, and you've got the Good Brothers. They're the Impact Tag Team Champions appearing on AEW every week, as well as appearing on Impact. Kenny Omega is the Impact Champion and the AEW Champion. So all this crossover stuff that we've never seen before is making wrestling interesting. Yeah. Um, but if yeah. WWE think they're going to pull new people in doing what they're doing at the minute, um, you know, trying to make it a big expanded thing. If you know, if anything, AEW is doing the universe thing better than WWE is. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they yeah. have all wrestling involved, whereas WWE is WWE and WWE inside its bubble. They don't even count fucking NXT really anymore for the most part. No, no. You know, they're no, acknowledging is... carrying Cross as the champion, but, you know, he lost to Jeff Hardy last week in two minutes or whatever. And, yeah, he beat Keith Lee this week. That match should have been longer, but it was cool to see him wrestle. But yeah, didn't, they, uh, they... didn't they not include um, when, they, when they announced how many times Charlotte had won the title? They didn't count yeah, their this... NXT. And... Yeah, they, they NXT bypassed champion it. like two years ago, didn't she? Or yeah, literally, like last year. Last year, when because um, it was her versus oh, Rhea yeah, at yeah, the yeah, yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah. The WrestleMania, yeah, the COVID, COVID mania. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, oh, yeah, she's an 11 time champion. It's like, well, no, she's more like 16, actually, if you count her next team or whatever it is. Yeah. But um, for some reason, they're not. And WWE. They don't, they don't count it. It's just strange. I mean, look, don't get, don't get me wrong. You know, there are there are some characters on, you know, I think Sami Zayn is excellent. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that's, a, that's a great character. 
Kevin Owens. I've got no issue with characters. I like like Kevin Owens. He he is a character. He is what he is. Um, You know, I appreciate a great promo. You know, I love, I love, you know, I, I, when, when Paul Heyman's on and he's doing a promo, Mm -hmm. I am just like watching him and thinking, geez, what, what, you know, unbelievable, unbelievable talker, you know, Reigns has gone, you know, just whew, to the moon. Oh, um, yeah. You know, and you know, I do, I do appreciate it, but there is a lot of bollocks. So there are the, the, there's some stuff that makes me laugh, but there is a lot of bollocks when there doesn't need to be when yeah. they've got so much talent. Yeah, it's, it's overcomplicated, overproduced, and um, mm-hmm. as it stands at the minute, um, a little bit lazy, and that yeah. has got to change because very, very quickly. AEW are you know creeping up their, their ratings are going up weekly hitting exactly, over a million yeah. now but you know you bring in yeah. the likes of CM Punk you bring in the likes of Daniel Bryan and you know people will see those names coming up who maybe have switched off from WWE years ago especially like you know CM Punk um you know that people are going to see CM Punk and be like oh CM Punk I thought he was done but now he's on this new wrestling show i'm going to check this out so that's going to bring either people back not you know it's not going to bring millions of people back oh, God, no, no, no. but it's going to bring you know people who have switched wwe off for whatever reason but now they're you know they're one of their old favorites are back uh but on this new brand they're gonna be like oh i'm gonna check this out just see what cm punk does then daniel bryan turns up and people will be like wait daniel bryan was in WWE. He was at WrestleMania. He was their champion. He did all the the yes stuff. He was even on the, the fucking Coke advert. Yeah. Doing the yes stuff. Yeah. You know, oh, so th- th- that means this must be a big deal. Mm. Yeah, and more, yeah. More and more people are going to... So I understand why AEW bring these guys in. Bring the old yeah. guys in. That's why, of course, you bring Jericho in. You, you know, Christian, yeah. people recognize Christian from Edge and Christian. Oh, Matt Hardy. Yeah, I know the Hardy boys. Let's Let's check this out. You know, and steadily, weekly, the ratings are going up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what they're doing is right. You know, WWE is very steadily sort of declining at the minute, but they need to take risks, start picking themselves back up again, use the talent that they've got. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Because it's ridiculous. The amount of talent they've got, they're spoiled. Yeah. 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 To to not use it is criminal. We've said it before. I remember there was was a battle royal a a while back. And the talent in that, I was like, we're going to look back at this in 10 years and think, Jesus Christ, look at the people in this battle royal. It was like yeah. Nakamura, Bala, Owens. It was, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, and the thing, I think as well with the with going back to sort of CM Punk, I, I presume, I mean, he owns that name, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he can be CM Punk wherever he goes. So he can he be CM UFC, Punk yeah. and he can use the music as well. Uh, and that, that makes a massive difference. Huge difference, because because you know the generally you know these guys they, they're going into they're going into um, into AEW and and having to use a different name. Obviously, you know Jericho didn't have to. That's that's his name. Um, you know, Alistair Black is now Malachi Black, and Daniel Bryan's going to have to be Brian Danielson. But you know, and all of that. So Punk being able to be in there and it's. Oh, that's CM Punk. I remember. I it's remember the him. same CM Punk that you remember. It's, yeah, it's the same Punk I remember. He'll probably have the same ring attire, and he'll, he'll have the he'll have the taping on his hat. Of course. It pro- and and it's be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is cool as fuck. I'm going to watch this. Yeah, but that's the difference. It's cool as fuck. AEW is it's cool. It's it's so much fun to watch because you don't know what's going to happen week on week. They had a fucking death match on <laughs> AEW in the main event this week: Chris Jericho yeah. versus Nick Gage, and yes. you know, um, you know there was. T- panes of glass being smashed, uh, light tubes being fucking hammered over people's heads. It was insane. And mm-hmm. this is on, you know, this is on national cable TV. They're taking risks that WWE don't take. I think it's one of them, isn't it? Where if 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 I was to, it's almost say to me, why do you why do you like wrestling? And say right, sit and watch this. Yeah, I'd I'd play them dynamite. I'd play them an episode of dynamite of course before. You would. Before I'd say watch Raw because they'd be like oh, you watch yeah. you watch this, be like, yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I mean, sometimes you know WWE is so cringy. Mm. Like you watch it and you're like, oh god, why do I watch this? I would never show anybody this. Oh, but god. you know, with AEW, it's just so cool. The crowd are hot for it every week, and you know, pretty much almost every segment is 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 catching fire. 
you know? And, yeah. you know, there's people on there that if they were in WWE, you would not give two shits about because of the way that they're being portrayed be on bold. TV. Yeah. But everybody who is portrayed on TV in AEW is the most important segment on the show at that time. That Cause it's yeah. made to feel that way. Mm. You know, yeah. um, people like, you know, the varsity blondes, people wouldn't care about them in WWE because they'd be booked terribly. Yeah. They'd be on fucking main event, but you know, their segment on dynamite, that's that that's their time to shine. The focus is solely on them. This is, these are the most important people in this company at this time. Yeah. Yeah. But WWE doesn't do that. They're always talking about what's coming up later. You know, what's happened earlier on in the show, cutting off matches during the, you know, the commercials and all that kind of thing. <sighs> that, that, that's what, that's, that's why I've said it before. That's why I enjoy the pay-per-views more than I mm -hmm. do the weekly TV. Smackdown's good, yeah. but the, the weekly TV, even, even NXT to a degree, because it's like, oh, another ad break. So, yeah, no, just, not, just as this okay. match was getting good. Right. It's okay in the yeah. states because they get picture in picture, but we don't get that here. No, we don't get that. No, no. You know, with AEW, I can watch the whole thing on Fight TV, um, and yeah, it shows. You know, but when the picture in picture stuff is going on, it just carries on. Well, even when I watch AEW on uh, ITV, you know, it, it says, "Oh, we're going to a commercial break," but it's because it's off the ITV hub. It's like five seconds, and then it's back. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like it's like it's like when we used to watch Raw on a Friday back when we were yeah. when we were younger, you know. It'd when be we like were youths. A, when we were youths. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But um I know I'm looking forward to SummerSlam. <laughs> I'm looking forward to SummerSlam as well. I'm looking forward to all out. I'm excited, you oh, know. God, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just um, I'm just a fan of pro wrestling who enjoys watching pro wrestling shows. You know, I've been a WWE fan, you know, my entire life. Yeah. And I want I always want to see um, WWE as a company succeed because that's what I grew up um, enjoying. That's the wrestling company that I grew up loving. And, mm. you know, as you, you carry these, you know, affiliations with you as you grow older, that's why, mm. you know, I'm so into WWE and always willing them to be the best that they can be. But, you know, you, you can't ignore AEW. At the minute, you can't ignore Impact. You know, they're, where the, the, the stage that wrestling is at at the minute, um, the landscape is changing. Um, but it doesn't mean that I want WWE to succeed any less. You know, I always no, no. want them to to get better and better themselves because at the end of the day, it's still the biggest wrestling company in the world. Of course. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's 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 something there for everybody in terms of wrestling. Hey, you, you don't like the overproduced stuff in WWE? You know, then you can watch AEW. If AEW is a little bit too too polished for you, you can watch Impact. If Impact isn't doing it for you, go and watch Game Changer. There's, there's so much, yeah. you know, so much different stuff. If you don't like any of that stuff, go to the Indies. You, you, you'll, you will find something you want as a wrestling fan. But, yeah. you know, I feel, you know, you're right in what you're saying before. Nobody hates wrestling more than wrestling fans. <laughs> but as wrestling fans, we should want all wrestling companies to succeed. It shouldn't be AEW versus WWE. Um, just like, you know, in, in this day and age where wrestling isn't as popular as it, you know, it was back when the Monday Night Wars were so mm. prominent and both shows were doing great, you know, it's not like that now. Them num the numbers aren't that big. So, you know, no. you, you, you should want everything to succeed because one day that thing might not be there. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah, would be a great shame, you know? I, I mean, I know I said, you know, I, I said that no one hates wrestling more than, than wrestling fans, but, but also... Right. But and yeah, I am right. But um, also, we're still wrestling fans, and when we see something good, yeah. we fucking love it. And, yeah. and 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 it's that's what we want, you know. Just just little things like Ricochet jumping off a ladder onto a rope and doing a swan song. And you're just like, what the, f unbelievable, you know. Yeah. And it, it's stuff like that that you go, oh, I remember now. This is why I like wrestling. This is you, why, yeah, because you're seeing, you know, you you. you <laughs> You see in like a, a live that's that's live that's not pre-recorded that's not no. oh, let, do that take again that wasn't quite good that's yeah. there and then on the fly absolutely knackered in front of a crowd and someone does that you're like this is that's why wrestling is awesome yeah you know? that is exactly why wrestling is awesome these but are like, real I mean, life people i like the fun, I like the fun stuff you know i'm 
I mean, I'm even I'm even warming to uh, Riddle. I, I, I wasn't into it for a beginning, but in in the beginning, but now I'm, you know, I'm warming to that. And you know, there are, there is stuff back. You know, Bar- Baron Corbin getting hit in the nuts, hilarious. Um, yeah. You know, great stuff. But yeah, yeah. But hey, at least we've got. You know, for a while it was just WWE, and that's all we had. Really. Yeah. Now we've got all is healthy. This. Yeah, it's great. We're spoiled. It's good. We are really, we, we're really we're super spoiled. Really, you know, um, AEW's really sort of pushed Impact into the light a bit more because it it never yeah. competed with WWE really. But now, you know, we've got all this stuff. We're so spoiled. You know, we've got there's so much to enjoy. I mean, I'm excited to watch Impact. I watched AEW earlier on. Um, MLW's great. I forgot to mention them earlier. There's yeah. just so much good stuff, man. And it's a great yeah, it's time different. to be a wrestling fan. And as wrestling fans, we just need to in, embrace it for for what it is you know yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know i, th- I, guess if you I don't think like it don't watch it i guess it's one of them isn't it it's as simple as that but don't will it to fail no no god no will no. it to succeed because like i said one day it might not be there and you know without with without wwe for example how successful can wrestling be yeah yeah I because guess it, yeah to, to, to people wwe is wrestling Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but now, you know, I wouldn't want to see AEW fail. I wouldn't want to see Impact no. fail. None of it. You want you want everything to succeed and uh, be the best that it can be and, you know, get back to the, the height of popularity that it once was, not that it probably ever will. No, but, I mean, like you say, WWE is wrestling, and you know that when people say, oh, do you still watch that WWF? Well, it's WWE. Exactly, now, yeah. But, but it's like they know that they're talking about the same company and they remember it from – way back you know and look at the superstars that wrestling can can provide us with in the world the rock has transcended wrestling greatly Um, yeah it's it's funny it's it's weird my my um my my daughter she can't quite get her head around that um that the rock is maui and i'm like Mm. he he used to be a wrestler no he didn't i was like yes he did (laughs) trust me yeah he didn't used to look like that he he was a wrestler and it's the same with john i was telling you the other day wasn't it yeah about about like I was watching SmackDown and Cena was, and she knew she knew who he was. Yeah, that's that's John Cena. I'm like, well, you know, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you won't find many people in the world that don't know who Hulk Hogan is. Oh God, no, no. No, you see, I mean, wrestling can just it just transcend the, well, the sport was it? itself, but they'll always be attached to wrestling. The Rock will always be the Rock. John Cena will always be a WWE superstar. You know? well, 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 people still call him the Rock. They don't go, oh, D- oh Dwayne, Dwayne's in, Dwayne Johnson's in. They go, oh, the Rock. He's in the Rock's new. Yeah, the Rock. Yeah, they, they call him the Rock. They don't go, oh, you're Dwayne. You know, um, and uh, I mean, he's still the Rock on Twitter, isn't he? At the Rock. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know uh, like Ric Flair was he was WCW as well, but it's like that um, that Joe. Have you seen that Joe Rogan stand up where he mentions Ric Flair's name? Yeah. And pretty much the whole crowd go woo, and he's like, look at that. He goes, I just had to say his name. And you all did that. He goes, that wasn't even that wasn't even rehearsed. You know what I mean? So, like you say, yeah, some of these guys are uh, you know, everyone knows them. Exactly. And yeah, whether people are into wrestling or not, people know who these people are and where they, they came know. from. So yeah, yeah, um, 100%. Exactly. Yeah. How back in wrestling be, eh? They can't be that bad. It's not yeah. like it's all right. Yeah, for sure. Gives us something um, to talk about anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, it keeps us doing a podcast every week. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys, I hope you've enjoyed um, this episode of the podcast. But a little different to normal, um, a little less structure. Um, but, you know, I feel like we've filled this hour and a half with uh, some stuff. We hope you've enjoyed Ooh. it. Um, hit us up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at Games and Graps. And uh, obviously, subscribe to our YouTube as well, youtube.com forward slash games graps. Uh, we have been doing some streaming and stuff again recently. So mm. that's twitch.tv forward slash games and graps. And we're on TikTok, and our TikTok is blowing up. We're fucking viral. That's it. Yeah, we are. We're the kings of viral. That's what we are. We're the viral video kings. Me versus Jake Paul in five years. Hell yeah. Fucking right. I'll, um, I'll call him out now. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. It's going viral. It's going viral. Yeah, Come on, Jake. <laughs> Let's do this. Meet you, Wembley Stadium. Yeah. 19 fans. Left, right, Johnny Knight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but guys, this has fans. been... 
<laughs> so guys this has been episode 149.9 of the games and grabs podcast we are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast the post on podcast services everywhere everywhere and the aforementioned youtube.com forward slash games grabs we will be back next week with a live special celebrating 150 episodes even though it's probably been a little bit more but no one counts the points um Finn will be back next week get well soon Finn um but for now my name is Sonny G and I've been here with Steve see you later and we will be back next week take it easy guys goodbye goodbye